Uh, good morning, thank you. Uh, so a bit more grace. Um, so you've seen already grace is an object oriented language. It was designed uh, specifically pragmatically for, for teaching programming. It's a dynamically typed language with an optional uh, type system. It has classes, traits, objects, functions, and lambda. It has a very interesting object model. So interesting that every time we, we sat down to talk with the, uh, with the Grace community, we got a different response about the corner cases of the semantics of uh, the object model. So we thought, well, this is an interesting challenge. Can we try to, uh, can we try to bridge the gap across these divergent implementations? Because there are quite a few. So our goal was to, is, so this is, this is ongoing work, uh, is to create a reference implementation for Grace. Something that a human being can read and understand, a human being that doesn't necessarily uh, speak uh, JavaScript. Um, now, if that's to be useful, we want to try to execute that directly. Um, and in order for it to, to support the language evolution, uh, we want the turnaround time to be, to be quick, and so that you can just edit the, the semantics and then run um, as the language evolves. So uh, to do this, we started using Spoofax language, the Spoofax language workbench, which we developed in, uh, in Delft. Um, and we envision Spoofax as a one-stop shop for, for language development. Um, you, it's basically a collection of, uh, of uh, meta DSLs uh, spe for specific purpose. Um, and from specifications in these DSLs, you get uh, um, pretty much for free um, a, a fully featured ID and an interpreter. Um, so, um, when we work in, in Spoofax, uh, it looks kind of like this. We have a, uh, a window for, for a syntax definition, um, where we capture uh, the syntax of a language and the formatting for that language in a language called SDF3. We do some desugaring in, um, uh, in Stratego, and we uh, recently added a new domain-specific language called Vinson for dynamic semantics where we can specify the dynamic semantics of a language as we write this. And in the end, we get a fully featured uh, ID for, for the language. So let's, let's try to see how the one for Grace looks like. So um, we've got a, just, this is Eclipse with, a, with an editor window. And I just uh, wrote, uh, oh, let's try something like this. And to run. So this is runnable as a, as a Java application and uh, we get a uh, hello world. And we can have uh, more complex programs. For example, this is a program that computes uh, Fibonacci. It's, it's a method defined in the, as Richard pointed out, in the implicit uh, object that surrounds all Grace programs. Um, and, well, nothing fancy here. But um, Grace has other interesting features. For example, uh, object orientation combined with functions as, uh, as first class citizens. So for example, this is a, a counter uh, class it has a, a readable, mutable field, um, publicly readable by, by the annotation, has a getter, and it has a, um, a function which returns, returns a lambda that increments this counter. So you can instantiate a counter and um, get the, the incrementer function, and um, you can apply the incrementer to, to advance the counter and then read it. So let's see what it does. So we get the uh, Zero for the first, uh, for the initial count value, and two after after two extra counts. Um, the same. So you can go on with our card. I didn't want to demonstrate the object model yet. Uh, we'll talk about that. So we have a nearly complete um, ID and interpreter for for Grace. Uh, how does this work in, in practice in our pipeline? So you start with the Grace program. Uh, we have a syntax definition. Um, for Grace, created in, in SDF3. That derives a parser, and it, we parse the program to an ASD. Um, we have program transformations. These are normalizations and desugarings on the ASD, <coughs> defined in, in the Stratego meta DSL. Um, so we take the, the original ASD, we desugar it, we get, a, we get a normalized ASD. And then from the dynamic semantic specification in Vinsam, uh, we, we get an interpreter which evaluates that to, to a value. So, for syntax definition, we have, um, we have the SDF3 meta DSL. Um, the nice aspect of, uh, the nice thing about uh, SDF3 is that you can uh, capture the formatting of the, uh, of the language. So, layout, um, the layout for the pretty printer and for the code completion template. 
And what you get is a, is a parser with, uh, with error recovery, an ID with a familiar syntactic services, a code completion engine, and a pretty one. And we did this for, for years. Now, one of the things we, we wanted to do on, on, on the pipeline to uh, evaluation was to try to normalize the ACE. So Grace has a bunch of features, um, most of them revolving around the object model. Um, and our goal was to try to reduce the number of features, because the fewer features, uh, linguistic features that go further down the pipeline, um, the, the, the easier it is to specify the semantics. Uh, so for example, one, one simple transformation that we do is we uh, desugar all classes uh, to factory methods. So a class C uh, gets the sugar to a method C with, a, with an object literal expression. Uh, the same for traits. So this is, this is removal of very simple syntactic sugar. Um, as Richard mentioned, uh, Grace uh, has um, multi-part method names. And these are, we anticipated this would be quite hard to, uh, to specify semantics for. So we decided to desugar them uh, by canonicalizing the names. So, in fact, the if-then-else in, in Grace is just a function call. The function name is if-then-else. So we rewrite this to a call to the if-then-else with, um, with a block for the condition. The curl is in, in lambdas. Uh, the curl is in Grace indicated as a lambda. Um, and uh, two blocks for the two bodies of the, the different branches. Um, and once we're done, the sugaring. So we do other sugarings as well, like uh, adding optional, uh, making explicit the omitted visibility annotations on fields. But these are quite uh, these are quite simple. Once you once you once you get done, so further down the pipeline, past the, the sugaring, we are looking at evaluation. This was really the <coughs> focus of, of our work so far, uh, specifying a dynamic semantics for for traits. Now. We did this in Dinsum. Dinsum is a language, it's a meta-DSL, which allows you to specify semantics as reduction rules for program terms to values. Uh, we use a style that's close to big step, uh, but it's not necessary that, uh, that, that, that you choose this style. Um, heavily inspired from, from implicit modules, uh, modules structural operation semantics, uh, you can leave out the context of the evaluation. So, for example, the environment for, for variables or the reference to self uh, can be left out of the reduction rules in the rules that do not need to, uh, to interfere with it. So, for example, um, this is the reduction rule uh, corresponding to a qualified method call. So, a method call consists of a receiver expression, a name of the, um, uh, of the method to evoke, and um, a list of argument expressions. And that should evaluate to a value. And the first thing we do is we say, well, E should evaluate. We evaluate E to some receiver. We evaluate the argument expression to some list of, of values. And we uh, call uh, onto uh, the call qualified meta function uh, to actually make the call. So in this sense, we can, we can separate uh, concerns. We can keep um, the part that is specific to, to a language uh, separate from the part that well, we can reuse or specific to a particular construct, we can keep separate from parts that can be reused later. So we'll reuse uh, the qualified call, for example, um, in the case of an unqualified call. Right. We first resolve the receiver and then, and then um, apply the same, the same method. We've recently added, um, so one limitation of our next step is that we can't support a rough termination. And, uh, Grace has non-local returns, so you can. Uh, the definition of Grace is that if you if you have a lambda and you have a return statement in there, it returns from the method enclosing the declaration of the lambda. So if you take that lambda and put it somewhere else and you return, if that uh, if, the, if the enclosing method declaration is still running, you're going to have to return out of it. Otherwise, to program it. Uh, and for that, you need some form of abrupt termination. And using uh, adapting implicit context propagation. Uh, we can thread a, uh, a return uh, flag throughout uh, the interpreter. Another nice thing about implicit context propagation is um, the fact that certain things can be left as concise as, as possible. So, for example, this is the uh, the call. This is a qualified call um, expression e um, 
so sorry, this is the lookup of the outer object of, of some of some object returned by by expression e. So in Grace, you can have this uh, explicit outer reference. You can, um, if you're deep somewhere in, inside the, inside an object, if you need to reach outside the lexical, so in the lexical scope of the of your object declaration, you can use an explicit outer reference. Um, and normally, this depends. So evaluating this depends on where you are currently, on the self you're in. So we'll first we'll we'll first evaluate e to some reference to some uh, some object s, some object address s, and using a meta function to access uh, to access the object um, of s, we just get the object. Object initialization in Grace is um, well, has a few very interesting aspects. We had a lot of fun with it. One of the one of the things is uh, you can have arbitrary expressions uh, for uh, to specify an ancestor of a class. So not just the name of a class, not just uh, string or anything. It's just a full blown expression. And the only condition that that expression must uh, must obey is that the last thing that it should do when it computes is to generate a fresh, to produce a fresh object instance. So it's pretty. Intuitively, it's easy, but how do you enforce this at runtime? Well, there are two approaches. One is you can say, well, we don't allocate the object, uh, or we allocate the object uh, on the heap, um, and object hierarchies or class hierarchies are just linked, uh, linked objects. That is reasonably easy to, to, to do, but very hard to actually uh, specify the semantics for, because you may have multiple um, Objects inherited from the same ancestor, in that case, we would share a kind of these strings. Our approach is to distinguish two modes of evaluation um, of a Grace program. Uh, one is to, in the normal case, you're just encountering an expression, you're not doing an object construction. You, if you encounter an object, which you, you just construct it in the allocated only. But if you are evaluating one of the inherit clauses, the expressions in one of the inherit clauses or one of the users, then you need to you need to prevent the allocation uh, on the heap of the object, and instead just capture the um, capture a closure. So what we do is we generate a hierarchy um, of object closures, which are very much similar to function closures in the sense that they close over the lexical environment and over the over the outers at the uh, location of the of the uh, ancestor object, um, and we later process. So then we can take it out of we can take it out of context. It is uh, self-explanatory, uh, self and we can process that uh, that hierarchy of closures to create uh, to create an object. Uh, and in the end, we t uh, we compile that hierarchy of objects to a flat object. So in in our heap, uh, the object is completely flat. Um, so let's take an example of why this could be complicated. Um, we have a class A with some few x. Um, we have a method m, and it conditionally returns either this or this object. And we have a descendant of class A, which um, applies method m to get one of those two objects. We want to do this, we want to get a flat uh, hierarchy at the end, um, a flat object at the end. Another issue with, uh, so another need for uh, having a class, um, sorry, having an object closure, is um, the ability to, so the need to remember what the outer uh, object of a, of, a, of a class is. So in, in the code on the right, method m of class A explicitly refers to the, uh, the member x of the outer object. So we need to remember what this is. So we, our approach is to, to do three, uh, th a three-stage object uh, initialization. The first, we uh, traverse the, uh, the, we evaluate the inheritance expressions uh, to create uh, these this hierarchy of object closures. Then we'll install members into the flat structure, and then we will actually evaluate the object initializers. And we reuse most, so all of the reduction rules for regular evaluation are reused uh, for object uh, construction. We have an implicit, uh, we have a flag which is a phase of. Uh, is to indicate what kind of evaluation we're in. If we're in exec phase, we're really just doing normal, regular object uh, object expressions. Um, and we will uh, so an object 
a literal consists of some inherit, some uses, and some fill, and will uh, process the inherit clauses with uh, with flatten mode to indicate that we should uh, um, that we should flatten the object. And for the rest, we do it with uh, if we are in a construction, we do it with flatten. So how far are we with this? Um, well, we're nearly complete. We support most of the features. We have some syntactic uh, differences uh, because we did that, we created our own parser. So we require semicolons and we can't enforce layout constraints. And that's currently a limitation of SDF3. And we don't yet have an implementation of the of the type system, which means we can't do instance off checks. And not being able to do instance off checks means we can't do pattern matching and user defined exceptions. In terms of size of the dynamic semantics only, uh, we are about 3.5. Uh, thousand lines of code, um, of DINSAM code, and uh, the, the mini grace implementation, the compiler is at uh, 17,000 lines of code. The good thing is we have a good test set, uh, so uh, moving on it's going to be uh, easy. And so in the future we want to, comp to finish the coverage and we need, to, we need to investigate performance. We haven't even be begun to evaluate performance. Um, we can do, um, we can do um, Tail uh, recursive tail call elimination at the level of the specification, at the level of, of the DIMSUM code, but we do not do any optimizations uh, at, uh, at, the, at the level of, uh, of grace. Um, and currently, the, uh, the layer of, of specification is a barrier in debugging. So, all, so it, it's easy to, to debug the specification because all errors will be reported in terms of the specification. It is nearly impossible to debug. A grace program because all errors will be reported in terms of this presentation. Thank you. Um, so, I said nice you can uh, declaratively specify the, uh, uh, the semantics of the language. How far is this from having a full-blown uh, interpreter or implementation of the language? And will I want to use one? I mean, if I if I created this using uh, Dyson, Dyson, uh how would uh, I mean? Is there a roadmap or something, or can you predict whether this is ever going to be something that will compete with? Uh, in terms of getting the getting the language going, it's very easy to do this with uh, with DIMSUM. So it's, it's very easy to get to get an interpreter built, um, and it's very easy afterwards to involve the uh, the specification as your as your language grows. Um, the interpreters that we, that we that we derive are fully functional interpreters as specified. Um, their performance is uh, currently not great. Our goal is to be within 80% of what you could do by hand. But this requires that we, we can at runtime eliminate the interpreter of the specification. And we're relying on techniques from, from Truffle and, and Graal to try to compile away um, this level, of, uh, this extra level of interpreter. So for, for, for example, for Grace, it seems usable in, perf in performance. Um, memory footprint is acceptable, um, so we think it's useful. Um, your specification includes a disregarding process, so I'm wondering uh, that is part a disregarding is part of the real uh, race specification or just a uh, way? So some disregarding is specified um, in the official race. Okay. Um, in the initial grace publication, um, the part um, regarding the implicit object and the part about translating classes and traits to, to factory methods. So that you are, uh, this, sugaring pro uh, this sugaring process only support these disugarings presented in the original paper only? So we have, uh, we split our disugaring into two, into two categories. Desugaring, which is uh, what is accepted in the, in the, grace, in the grace standard implementation, um, and some operations we call lowering, um, which are transformations that we apply to make evaluation easier. Uh, one of these 
uh, is um, rewriting in pattern match. So we rewrite pattern match blocks to actually be if then else conditional instance objects. Um, so one more question. Uh, so you said three point six thousand uh, sides of code. How does it compare with other semantics that you implement for other languages? Is very like particularly difficult or you know convoluted or you know it's it's particularly verbose or it's about average or you know what's if, if you have any sort of numbers you have. Um, this is this is the biggest case study we've had with, with, with this, uh, the display. Uh, it has a particularly convoluted object initialization model. So um, the, 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 the sort of the arbitrary expression and the, oh no, there was the... So that, 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 that was part of one time, that's part of it. And the other part of it is really constructing the object. Because Grace has uh, aliases and exposures on and multiple inheritance. And how you combine this into, uh, how you combine this into a single that uh, representation is quite complicated and requires a specific order. Um, so over 80% of the code is in the order. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's 2000. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Any more questions? Well, let's think about it again.